Hey, what's up guys? David here from Dignited. Today, I want to review the Mac Mini 2020 computer. All right, let's get into it. All right, so this is a different kind of video that I'm doing today. And I just want to share my experiences using the Apple 2020 Mac Mini. I bought this computer in 2020, around December, but I started using it around April 2021. So effectively, I've used it for about two years. Now, I bought this computer for a very specific reason, and that is video editing. I wanted something that I could use to basically just edit some of the videos that I'm uploading on YouTube. I wanted something very small, efficient, and quiet. That is why I went for this computer. I bought it at about $700 on Amazon at the time, but when I check the price currently, you can get it for $550 on Walmart or Amazon. So it's a fairly priced computer that you can use. But I found it extremely powerful and very efficient for my workflow. All right. So I just want to share my experiences using this computer. And well, you guys can uh, throw in the comments below if you agree or disagree. But this is really an honest genuine review of this computer the way that i've been using it for the last two years to edit these youtube videos that i've been uploading so i'm going to talk about some of the things that i like about it and some of the things that i dislike or some of its limitations all right so number one the thing that i really really love about this little computer here is that it is extremely quiet like zero noise compared to my laptop for example the asus vivobook it has really loud fans especially when i'm doing some heavy workloads or when i have like 10 20 chrome tabs open or when i open a heavy application like vs studio for coding it kind of spins up its fans and you can hear it it's really loud but this little computer it doesn't matter how many applications that i open it remains extremely extremely quiet and I use this computer actually in the bedroom this is where my home office is and it doesn't really bother everyone else at home so this is one big plus about this little computer it's extremely quiet the second reason I love the Mac mini is that it is a small computer it occupies a very small space and it's also really lightweight so it measures about 1.2 kilograms or 2.6 pounds and its dimensions are roughly the size of a, a square plate I don't know if that works as an analogy but it's really very small i'll put up the dimensions in the video so because i have a very small workspace it's really a very small table here this computer can really fit here and i can do my work and reclaim the excess space for other things the next thing is that this computer has actually multiple ports now this is not really something common with apple computers especially their laptops but if you're going for something with a little bit of more ports then this mac mini is what you need now at the back you have two usb4 thunderbolt ports that give you data transfer speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second so that is really ultra fast and if you have portable ssd hard drives then you can hook them up and have really fast data transfer and since i use this computer for creative workflows majorly video editing this is really a plus and also you can connect one external display with up to 6k resolution with one of the usb-c ports then it has two usb-a ports I use this to connect external portable USB hard drive as well as connect other peripherals like this USB mic that I'm using to voice over my YouTube videos. So I have two extra ports and I can also use the other port actually to connect a wireless mouse. So those two extra USB ports are really really helpful for me and I can connect all these different devices to my Mac mini without really needing a USB-C hub. But of course, if you're doing video editing, you still need a lot more ports. If you really need more ports, then you can connect a USB-C hub to one of the USB-C ports and uh, that gives you a bit of more extra ports to connect your other external devices. Now it has one HDMI port, which I actually use to connect to an external monitor. Now that is extremely essential because the Mac Minis don't have 
monitor. This is something that you have to buy separately. They don't come with a keyboard. That is something that you need to buy separately. So I actually had to buy this little keyboard here from Amazon for about $99 or so. And luckily it's wireless, so I don't need any port for it. Yes, it works through Bluetooth. And also you don't get a mouse. So that is something that you have to buy separately. And luckily I don't really need to buy one of these expensive Apple mouse. I just have to use any PC mouse and it works. So this is like a $20 mouse and it totally works. All right, moving on. It also has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now, most people may not find this helpful, but if you're into video production or content creation, you may actually need one. So I use it to connect a wired mic and you know, have good quality audio for some of the voiceovers that I do. All right, and now on two wireless connectivity, you have Wi-Fi 6, which is really the latest standard in Wi-Fi technology. And this is ultra fast. Currently, my router is Wi-Fi 5, but this future proves me when I actually get to the point where I upgrade my Wi-Fi router to something that is faster. So that is a plus for me. I can connect to really fast Wi-Fi internet connection, but I can also connect to my NAS drive or to my iPhone and, you know, airdrop and do all these wireless data transfers with really fast connectivity. And then you have Bluetooth 5.0, so you can connect your headphones here or Bluetooth speaker or anything that really works with Bluetooth. So I have this little Anka Soundcore Mini that I use while I'm working and I just connect it directly to my Mac Mini and I have really good background music while I'm working. So you're literally covered across the board here when it comes to connectivity. Now on to software, this computer runs macOS, the latest version being Ventura, that is 13.5 at the time of recording this video, which is exactly the same software that you get across all other Apple computers. Right, so macOS is an extremely stable and secure operating system by all standards. You don't need an antivirus, you don't need to worry about malware and spyware and all that because the operating system is stable by default. It's secure from the ground up. That is a plus. The computer doesn't begin to run slow. A common thing with Windows computers, for example, when you buy a Windows PC, it's really fast when it's new, but when you use it over time, it begins to slow down. And that is because the operating system gets to be compromised by all sorts of security vulnerabilities. So I love the stability and the security that you get from Mac OS, but also Mac OS is compatible with multiple softwares, especially the creative types. So you can install literally any creative application here. For example, you can install Adobe Photoshop. If that is your workflow, you can install Adobe Premiere. You can install GIMP, but also productivity software like MS Office. Now, macOS also comes with its own built-in productivity software and also the creative things. So since I bought this computer for video editing, I can install Final Cut Pro here. I had to cough another $300 to get Final Cut Pro. And you also have Apple Motion, which I think costs about $50. So with that, my video editing workflow is really fast and efficient thanks to the M1 chip, which comes with eight core GPUs and eight core CPUs and a GB of RAM. Now, these are fixed specifications. You can't upgrade the RAM, for example. It is what it is. So what comes with the computer is what you're going to have to work with. It also comes with 256 GB of onboard storage. Now, this is dependent on the multiple models. You can get a model of 512 GB of internal storage or 1 TB of storage. And I think up to 2 terabyte of storage. But remember, of course, with every upgrade, you'll have to top up about $200 as you increase on your storage. 
and I found that extremely limiting for me. Since I bought this computer for video editing, the 256 GB is very, very small. So if you look at my storage audit here, Mac OS alone takes about 14 GB of storage, then system data takes another 14 GB. My applications that have been installed, and there are very few, are taking up about 30 GB of storage. So you effectively have about maybe 200 GB of storage to play around with. So that is more if you're into video production. So what I did is I had to buy external SSD drives that I connect to the Mac Mini to increase on my storage needs. And I also had to get a Synology NAS drive to store really huge media files. All right, so if you're going to do video production and you're going to get a Mac Mini, you really need to understand the storage limitation of this computer. You have to keep on freeing up storage every now and then, or you will have to buy additional external storage, either via external portable hard drives or via NAS drives. So that is one big limitation of the Mac Mini. The second one is of course RAM. With 8 GB of RAM, it is really sufficient for the workflows that I'm doing but if you have very many Chrome tabs open as well as Final Cut Pro and other application open at the same time, this AGB of RAM may run out quickly. I'm not complaining with the AGB of RAM currently. I think I can work with that quite efficiently. Right, so the M1 Mac Mini is not the latest. As we all know, the M2 Mac Mini came out, I think, last year. And there's really no difference between these two models, except for the increase in performance in terms of the CPU and the GPU. So the M2 features two more GPU cores over the M1, resulting in a moderate boost in performance. Apple says that the M2 has up to 25% higher graphic performance than the M1 at the same power level. So if you are looking for that little bit of performance, then probably you can go with the M2. But for me, for my needs currently, I don't see a very huge difference between the M1 and the M2 Mac Mini. All right, so this M1 Mac Mini has worked for me and continues to work for me as my primary video editing machine and i'm quite happy with it currently it's extremely quiet it's power efficient it's extremely powerful and it can you know just handle all the video editing softwares that i throw at it i have final cut pro as well as audacity and obs studio here i have vlc and descript installed on my computer and they all work flawlessly so it is a video editing workforce for me for just about 700 dollars at the time that i bought it so some people may not like this but the fact that it doesn't ship with a mouse monitor and keyboard means that you are at liberty to choose what works for you right so i had to buy this external 27 inch asus monitor that is currently working for me and i had to get this little mouse here for just 20 dollars and it totally works and then i had to of course get this mac keyboard here i had to go with the mac keyboard because i needed the shortcuts although even a pc keyboard can actually work right so those are my thoughts and experiences using this m1 mac mini 2020 by apple do i recommend it absolutely i think it's a great machine for people that do a lot of creative work but if you're just going to send emails and browse the web and watch youtube videos i think this is an overkill you have way more power than you need so this has been my long-term review of the mac mini 2020 if you like this video go ahead and give us a like and ring the bell icon so you don't miss out on future videos otherwise i'll see you guys in the next one